we all, you all know Yahoo. We might have used their email. We might have used their search engine. We might have used their messenger with uh, those uh, buzz sounds, right? That was uh, that were waking up the entire house if you didn't have your sounds muted on the computer, right? We all remember that period. Now, what happened with Yahoo? Now, if you look at the press, Yahoo had 5 million accounts hacked. Uh, it, it was believed that it was uh, state-sponsored. Then it was all over the news. Then Yahoo actually uh, published, uh, uh, was obliged to, um, uh, to declare a class action settlement to every user that, uh, that was on Yahoo. So basically, it was literally all over the news. Even if you search it right now, it has its own Wikipedia page. You have over 1,300,000 results if you search it on Yahoo. But let's actually go and dissolve this attack and see exactly what happened in this attack. So if we look at this particular attack, of course, let's look at some categories. We will look at the attack title, the type, how did it happen? some wow facts and how to avoid this type of attack because it's important, right? It's still relevant even in today's uh, day and age. So the title, if you look at all over the place, is going to be Yahoo Data Breach. It was spear phishing. Uh, basically, if we look at, uh, at what spear phishing is, this is basically a phishing campaign that is not targeted to everybody. It's not like I'm putting something out there and I'm waiting to see what happens here. No, it's actually targeted to a specific person or group that will include usually the information that you want to know. And of course, initially, in order to do the spear phishing, you need to do a bit of social engineering. But in this particular case for spear phishing and why it's not considered social engineering, it's you just do reconnaissance, which is also the initial part of social engineering. And then if you uh, cannot do a spear phishing, then you move on to social engineering and you try to get the information in a different way. So again, this is a type of phishing campaign that targets a specific person or group often uh, will include known information of the interest of the target. And uh, the target uh, has a connection to something that is an interest of the attacker. Okay. So let's see, how did this happen? So there was a Latvian hacker that gained access to the Yahoo user database. And uh, when he did this, he basically gained access to the uh, account management tool and to the database of users. Then what they did is they have created a special type of cookie that will be installed through the Yahoo uh, uh, website on the user's computer so that that cookie afterwards allowed them to connect to any account that has used that cookie without even knowing their passwords. Now, that's a bit, uh, a bit strange, right? I also felt a bit, uh, a bit worried because I also had a Yahoo account. Luckily, it was, uh, it was uh, passive for a long time. I had no relevant data in there, so I just ignored it. But, uh, but yeah, if I, was to, uh, if I were to be a regular user of Yahoo, I would be uh, freaking out when I have so I, I've seen this report. Now let's look at some wall facts. Yahoo did not report this breach until September 2016, and almost one year from then, actually one year and uh, plus from that uh, angle, uh, Yahoo actually affirmed that all three billion users of theirs were affected by this particular uh, hack. Now, this basically transformed the Yahoo data breach into the largest security data breach in the history of internet at that particular time. And that's basically why it ended up on our list. Otherwise, we wouldn't have talked about it. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, I'm sorry, I'm recovering from a cold. So if my voice goes a bit uh, weird, I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> okay, uh, so. <clears throat> I thought I was um, uh, almost cured from this cold, but it seems it's not. Uh, so guys, what could have been uh, done so that you avoid this type of attack? So we, can, we have aggressive email security and also phishing awareness training. 
Now, if you are a company that sells email, you should actually have all your employees very well prepared to face off any type of phishing attack, even if it's on their personal email, even if it's on their work email. So that's why guys, employee awareness is mandatory. And as well in the, um, in the work environment, you can actually use tools, email security tools, even Heimdall's, for example, or any other tool out there, you, you choose, you, you pick, right? Um, you can use those tools to literally block all incoming email aside of approved addresses, right? So if your, uh, if your users are not, let's say in sales or something like that, you can actually just open them up to email addresses that they need. This basically will end up in uh, you being more secured. Of course, it's a bit of a, of a difficult uh, a task to pull. You would need to invest the time in opening up the email addresses, but then you uh, basically spare yourself from this particular cost.